Diana here and welcome to the brand new video of the week. Uh, we're going to talk about today about weight fluctuations. In this video, I will just gather the information, how you should approach the skills. This is my approach to it. And I would really encourage you to see it in the same way, just as a form of measure, just a tool to track the data and your progress. But what I would just like to say before kind of you start any further, if your health and fitness is your main goal to kind of improve your daily habits, to improve the relationship with food, then I would really suggest that uh, you kind of ignore this video until you're feeling really ready to tackle the weight loss. Because if you if you are uh, still kind of having, let's say, the poor relationship with food, or you're still kind of struggling with the mindset, this is kind of somewhere down the, down the line in your journey. So weight, uh, if you're kind of specifically looking as weight as your main goal, uh, and if you don't have kind of any backup uh, things that you need to work on, then uh, go for it and watch this video. So I can really hope this is kind of going to just to shed some light, but also to give you the confidence to to understand why we are using it, uh, what is it for, and just to kind of understand it better. So first of all, kind of I'm talking about the scales. Uh, so this is what kind of most of people have. Some people hate it, so they chucked it out of the house. But kind of what are the scales? The scales are a form of Measure. It basically measures absolutely everything that's on our body and in our body. So that means that you are going to weigh differently if you are having different type of clothing, if you're putting extensions on your head, if you're having hat, if you're in a full gear. Uh, but also, so if you get rid of that clothes, you are going to see that you are a few kilos, a few pounds lighter. But also that's the same within your gut. So in your intestines, in your, like, it's obviously your bowels, and also or it needs to come out. So every single thing that you consume on a daily basis, that scale is going to measure. And that's really important to know. Uh, and uh, I'm going to talk in the next slide for you to kind of to understand better how you can actually start, uh, what's the best time to start. But let's do that next to the slide. So, but what's the purpose of scales? In this program, I want you to use scales to gather data. That is for you to have the best understanding how the weight fluctuates, uh, how it's completely normal that fluctuates even a few pounds up and down within a few days. And for you really to remove that emotional attachment. It's you or me that have created that opinion about what the scales are. When you step on the scale, that emotional feelings that you are experiencing for stepping on that scale isn't coming from scales, it's coming from you. And you have to understand that. This is, uh, the scales are, or your size is not proof of your self-worth. So you will have to really detach yourself from that. Uh, also, how you can improve the relationship with scales is for you just to understand that scale just measures what's on you and what's in you. And if you are, let's say, seeking the weight loss, you will really have to see now completely flexible approach to it, which you're going to see why. So let's talk about other forms of measure. So this is kind of like really important for you to, to know. Self-awareness is about your strengths, how you feel every single day, what your daily hab habits are, behavior improvements, uh, you know, mindset insights, understanding what your behavior is like, the improved confidence and self-esteem, if you're having looser clothing, so tape measurements that kind of track your progress long term, photos, kind of you have that kind of the initial photo and then seeing the progress, how your body is changing and responding to changing your lifestyle. But also kind of when it comes to health and fitness improvement. So uh, some of you might struggle with health, some of you might struggle with fitness. And for you to, be, for example, to go up the stairs uh, without being completely breathless, so you can now run up the stairs without, you know, losing the breath, or that you don't have to sit down and have a break, and you can run around with your friends or run around with your family. These are all the signs that you have to put together to see how you're progressing. If you're measuring only on scales, I'm going, to, I'm going to guarantee you that you're going to be very miserable in this journey. You're going to feel deflated, frustrated all the time if you are seeking that number as the only way of measuring your progress. So how is your sleep improved? Uh, are you feeling better with your mood? Kind of, are you less angry and moody and uh, just snappy? Are you shouting less? This is all the things that we really have to celebrate. 
And I really want you to, to really be observant of that. So the next thing is uh, scales. So let's get back to scales and the best time to measure is early in the morning, uh, after the toilet, before you consume anything, minimal clothing, once a day, once a day. There's no stepping up on the scale, random time during the day, what's the point? You, this is like one liter of water, it's one kilo, or like roughly one kilo, two pounds. So you drink that, step on the scales, you're two pounds heavier. You have a dinner, you're three pounds heavier. So you really have to allow yourself to, to drop down you know, to, to let your body relax. So some people say kind of why night, night time. So night time, it's almost kind of your body kind of just balances out. Uh, you know, you have uh, the urine, you have the wee in the morning, you, sometimes you have a poo in the morning. And this is all kind of, if you're thinking about it as a volume, it all has weight. And that's what's going to show you on scales. If you're having full bladder, it's going to show a different type of scale. So this is the things that why you really have to see it as to, totally from a different perspective than you might be experiencing by coming in this program. So what's as well important is you're thinking about, you need to gather the data to compare over the period of time, average loss per month. So, and I want you to see the bigger picture. Um, it took me uh, 12 months to lose 12 kilos. This is two pounds per month or one kilo per month. But I'm just going to tell you, I focused on my habits and behavior change on my improving my relationship with food. And while I was working on weight loss, I was massively looking more to improve my daily habits and daily behaviors to implement those discipline, uh, disciplines that, that got me where I am today. And I'm still doing all those same things over and over and over again, every single day, what I've done two years ago to start my journey. And this is why it's uh, it's just really important for you to understand. So this is the thing, like don't get caught up in unrealistic expectations because you are going to have specific expectations. That's what you've done before. And just think about where did they get you? So um, it's really important to understand what will move scales to go down over a period of time this is it. You can snapshot it. You can put a picture somewhere. It's the consistent control calorie intake. What comes into your mouth? Consistent, so plus consistent energy expenditure. It's your daily activity plus exercise, daily movement, exercise, how much you're moving every day, what you're doing every day. Are you getting puffed up in a day or you're just going, going sedentary? will affect the rate of your weight loss. So these two things consistently are going to create a negative energy balance that is required for you to lose weight. If you're not losing weight, it means that you haven't been able to manage energy, negative energy balance, which could be underestimating your food intake. That's why it's important if you are weighing and tracking calories, it's really important to put everything on the scales. Some people say it's obsessive, it's not obsessing, it's gathering data and learning about the amount of food that you consume. You will very soon realize how much more you eat than your body needs. And that's why we all hold excess body fat. This is not any magic in it. It's just simple, let's say, maths calculation. If you don't want to work on this, I'm going to tell you, you will always struggle with weight. You need to cover the basics first, understand Okay, what the food that I consume every single day, how much is that in calories? Or let's say in energy value, give me the numbers. Or consistent energy expenditure. So lots of people overestimate their energy expenditure. You feel like you're burnt, let's say. This is all kind of estimate, but you always need to know, you might underestimate, sorry, overestimate your energy expenditure. Maybe you, you think, oh God, I'm really active, but actually in real life that maybe you are not, but the rate of your weight loss or fat loss will always come down to have you been consistent with achieving your negative energy balance. If you haven't achieved weight or fat loss, it means that you didn't achieve a negative energy balance. It means that you haven't been consistent with the controlled calorie intake that requires to, uh, to, to achieve that deficit and you haven't been consistent with increased energy expenditure, I'm always going to say there's two separate things. Use the exercise and movement for your mood and energy levels, and then uh, use uh, the food 
for feeling good, getting that, you know, health under control, getting your bowels to move properly rather than getting constipation or issues with stomach or bloating or you really have to pay attention. And I hope in this program, I'm definitely going to teach you all of that. So take the picture of this. This is your formula. This is simply your formula. Now, what controls your consistent controlled intake will depend on your mood, on your daily habits, on your sleep, hydration, food choices, how you know how you respond to your emotions, stresses, and you know just the life in general, and how self-aware you are. And that's okay. The most important thing is that you take one step at a time, learning, observing, and applying. And the next day, you are trying to do the same all over and over again. There's no failure. There's no, oh, I can't do this. Oh, I'm, you know, I'm bad at this. No, everybody is doing the best they can for how they feel, how much they know, and just simply, how, you know, how easy or hard they find. So please, please, please do not be hard on yourself. This is the process of learning and applying and being kind to yourself. So hopefully really this kind of just sheds some light. You cannot be hard on yourself. You cannot. If you're hard on yourself, you're going to be where you are forever. So you have to let go and say, I'm doing the best I can. I am going to learn this. If everybody, if everybody else is able to achieve this, I can do the same. I can learn, I can overcome and I can be better. So it's just as simple as that. So here now, it's just to kind of give you the insight is to lose one pound of body weight per week. You have to be three and a half calorie, three and a half thousand calories in a deficit per week from your maintenance. So, um, so let's say if you are, I'm just I kind of have, have to now put it uh, on my, I was just thinking, it literally just came into my mind. So let's say you're a maintenance calorie. So this is all different for everyone. This is not the same. I'm just going to use the rough numbers to kind of give you an idea. So if you, to maintain your current weight is, let's say, 2,000 calories. So let's say my, I'm going to use myself. So for 2,000 calories is my maintenance. Okay, so I'm going to apply the 2,000 calories for seven days. That is 14,000 calories per week. Um, I need to eat to maintain my current weight. So for me to lose one pound per week, I have to deduct three and a half thousand calories. And that's my total weekly calorie intake is 10,500 calories or 1,500 calories. Let me just check if actually is this is right. <laughs> Hopefully this. Yes. So my average, so my daily energy intake is 1,500 calories to stick to to lose one pound per week. Okay, if I want to lose two pounds per week, I need to be in a deficit 7,000 calories, which is, so minus 7,000, that is basically, so I can do 7,000, which means that I would need to eat 1,000 calories per day to lose two pounds of body weight per week. So I'm talking about just the average exercising, average moving, 10,000 steps, um, and then three workouts a week. So for you now to kind of really be rational about the rate of your weight loss, I'm going to say if you can't, so I'm talking about the average here, if you can't stick to 1,500 calories every single day, what do you do? Do you have a blowout? No. Flexible approach, you increase your calories by 100. If you can't stick to 1,600 calories, then, okay, let's maybe check your food choices because if, you have, if you're not having the protein consistently every single day in your diet or like if within your food choices, you're going to struggle because you're going to have increased hunger and obviously like increased appetite. And, but anyway, like that's kind of for another video, but I just really want you to hear to pay attention. Why people are focusing on two pounds because it's exciting. It's, you know, oh, I'm going to lose weight fast. It requires a specific, a, a specific rigid approach because for, uh, for 1,000 calories per day, it means like you're not going to eat. There's a high chance that you're going to binge because you're hungry. Not because your body can't cope on 1,000 calories, because simply you need more food. 
And this is, I just want you to remember it. Your expectations of weight loss. Start, finish. There's no start and finish. Well, there is a start and continuous process. Why there is no finish? Because whatever you have finished in your mind, you will have to learn how to maintain it. So every single one of the people, it's they just want to have kind of, you know, straight drop. It never happens. This is the reality of a weight loss. This is kind of one of you. I just took the picture of it. It can be the initial, uh, the initial quick weight loss is when you're feeling motivated, inspired, and when you feel, oh dear, my little is here. Um, so this is the reality. You might say, I don't like it, but this is what happens in real life. That quick drop, motivation is super high, you can stick to things, and then your mood goes all over the place. Something happens in life, and you can just see here uh, in this area, and then you struggle, you start to struggle, and then, okay, you've gathered, you've gathered yourself back again, and then your weight drops down again, and then you might go on holiday here, and your mindset is just all over the place, and you just struggle you know, get back yourself on track and then you drop your way down again. So, and, and this is the real life. And what you're kind of learning in this process is how when things go wrong or things how you don't want them to go, how you can pick yourself up. And that's why you are here to learn this. Progress, not perfection. Perfection will leave you uh, feel like a total failure because simply it doesn't exist. So what you are looking here is the progress over a period of time. Okay, uh, and don't get the idea of I need to have uh, the end, the finish line, because there's no end finish line. The end finish line is literally when we are dead. That's it. And for the rest of our life, we're going to have weight and we're going to weight a certain way. And I want you to learn and to carry this knowledge forever. Where you feel comfortable with, where you feel good about yourself. Do you want to have your energy high? Do you want to get to step of routine? etc. will affect your weight. So weight fluctuations, uh, let's talk about weight fluctuations and I really want you kind of when you step on that scale, I want you to have exact clarity. This is what it is. Time of the day, when we said earlier, if you don't, if you don't, if you do it th throughout the day, you are actually setting yourself for failure uh, or frustration because it's simply whatever you consume, <laughs> Leila, so whatever you consume, you are going to you're, you know, you're going to weigh that on, on that scale. Uh, time of the month. If you're... Leila, can you... Come on. Um, <laughs> crisps. <sighs> um, so time of the month. Uh, before your period, your weight is going to go, go up because of weight fluctuations. Uh, sorry, um, water retention. And because of the hormones. Uh, but also, don't get kind of caught up into it. Oh, I'm just going to control it. It's fine. Let go. If you see that your food choices uh, obviously change so that you're going to ha have more carbohydrates, more um, sugar, or kind of different type of food when in comparison to, let's say, the beginning of your, uh, after, your, after your period finishes, then be okay with that. But I'd say be aware of how much food you actually consume. So, for example, you can increase your calories uh, so that you don't feel absolutely hungry or that you're constantly kind of feeling like you're restricting yourself. And then allow yourself to have three good weeks and then one week where you kind of like, let's say, you plateau. Um, so, time of food you consume. If you're having carbohydrates uh, and uh, processed foods and kind of crisps and your weight is going to go up because simply uh, if there's lots of salt and carbohydrates in it, uh, you're going to have the water retention. If you're dehydrated, you'll be um, having that water retention because your body needs fluids. So if you are increasing your water, then you're going to notice how much um, you kind of lose weight much quicker. So uh, what you ate, so the time of the day, uh, okay, I did say that already, time of the day you consume food, what you ate the night before. So if you're, let's say, having on a regular basis that you are having lighter dinner and then one night you have the bigger dinner, you go out, you step on a scale next morning, please do use the common sense in a sense, it's just a large meal and that needs to come through, come through your digestive tract uh, and it will just come out um, as a bowel movement. So if you're const constipated, that's heavy, that's weight, it's volume, it will show up on the scale. When you go to the toilet, you're going to notice that uh, 
you know, do your wake went down. So water retention uh, due to carbohydrates, salt. Um, but also let's talk about what happens if your weight hasn't gone down or a period of 14 days. Then I'm going to go back to the same thing. Uh, have you been consistent with uh, reduced calorie, uh, calorie control, like a calorie intake and... Uh, yeah, calorie intake and increased energy expenditure and being basically be consistent over that uh, over the 14 days. Um, so the conclusion, Leila, can you, Leila, Leila, it's, go over there, go outside. Let me just sort her out. So the conclusion for this is measure once a day, uh, put in the app, detach your emotions from data because it's just simply what you're creating that emotional state of our skills is completely I'd say and maybe uninformed just because you you had, didn't know this information so I really hope that it's kind of this helped you to change your mind um so learn what spikes spikes your weight so observe what you ate so I literally just go back to the reasons of weight fluctuations and just look observe if you had more um like more carbs in a day or if you had processed foods or if you had more salt your weight will go up if you didn't drink enough water your weight might start um, kind of plateauing and so you don't see much of a progress and also track progress over time so i'm going to say look at it from a month perspective don't kind of zoom in into one day oh my god one day no zoom out Literally, if you're looking at the calendar, you see kind of that one day and we're like, oh my God, I've lost a pound. Oh my God, I've gained two pounds. Oh my God, I lost two pounds. Oh my God, I gained three pounds. Zoom out. Zoom out for a month or a whole year and see how, how you're progressing. And you will really have to change the, the mindset about this. Uh, if you don't, um, then this is obviously a reason why, why you're resistant to it. Um, so... And accept the progress won't be linear. It's, there's no way it's just going to go straight down. It's absolutely impossible. And also, what happens if it goes straight down? Are you able to maintain that kind of lower body weight anyway? So um, so the smaller the deficit, the smaller will be weight loss. But just think about from sustain a sustainability approach. Uh, sorry, uh, from um, is it sustainable? Or is it more complicated because you put too much too big expectations, uh, it simply doesn't seem possible. Let's reverse it and let's see where is possible. What's possible to achieve it? Is it uh, just to control uh, the food choices? Is it to control the regular meals? Is that to control what goes into your mouth? Is that just to focus on having a protein with every meal? And kind of like little things like that. So, uh, and, and now I'm just going to say, trust the process. It really... This thing, like energy balance, that's the whole truth about, um, I spoke with someone yesterday and when I found out that that's kind of the truth and the reality of weight management, I've just, you know, which basically gave me freedom to eat what I want and not to be freaked out that I'm going to gain weight if I want to eat sugar every day, that I'm going to gain weight if I drink five coffees a day, that I love drinking. So... Whatever you love eating and, I don't know, having a glass of wine every night, if that fits in your daily calories, daily allowance, then you are going to be able to, to maintain it. You're going to find it so much more enjoyable life because you're going to be able to allow yourself to eat without guilt and you just know, okay, I ate more, I just need to, feel, I just need to be more active. Not in the sense I need to now burn off my calories, no. I just need to be more active, just the balance. I'm doing my balance that works for me. And uh, this is the last thing, do the work. Without you doing the work when it comes to physical improvement uh, or focus on certain things, when you're feeling that you're struggling, that you're seeking for help, this is going to massively change, um, change your journey. Or you're going to hide and think about, oh, I can't do this on my own. You're not here on your own. You are here with me and I'm going to support you through any obstacle you face. Because you can do this and you can absolutely overcome anything that comes your way. You just need to be patient. You need to trust the process and know I'm here.
for you to support you with anything so lots of love to all of you i hope this is good if you found this useful do comment below please 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 give me give me some feedback i want to know and um and i'm looking forward to to hear from you lots of love and i'll speak to you soon bye bye